Welcome to the B Max Sports Podcast. Hey, we got 30 minutes for the rest of our lives. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes for the rest of our lives. Make sure to subscribe on all platforms. Let's be great. Let's be great. Hope you enjoy the show. Tate and Josh in the morning. We're back again, ladies and gentlemen. We thought this was going to be our last audio-only version. Unfortunately, it looks like we've got some delays on some shipping on some of our equipment. You can look for the first week of July. We're going to have our first uh, video version. We're still going to keep the audio version, of course, but um, the mics and everything will be here. It's just a couple of uh, other things or we're waiting on, so... We'll probably just surprise you with it and record it one night and just fucking upload it and let you guys see what you think. Anyway, Josh, how was your day, brother? It was good, buddy. Got a little late getting off work, but everything's fine and dandy, man. Yeah, same with me. I'm tired. Been hitting the gym hard. And let me just give you guys an update. I know on one of the last uh, last episodes, I said I was going to give up porn for two weeks. Man, little did I know, buddy. Holy shit, Brandy Love, some Brandy Love cheeks would hit different right now. <laughs> but unfortunately, I have sta- stayed true to myself, and I have not watched porn in, so far, I think it's been almost a week. I haven't really been keeping track. But it's a hard night life for us, buddy, I'll tell you that. It is a hard night life, man. And it's a good... But I, I'm proud of myself. I'm becoming healthier. I started eating healthier. I've been going to the gym every day after work, and my body is taking a toll, son. I'm fucking sore as shit. But anyway, let's jump right into it. First order business. Let's talk about Rayshard Brooks. If you don't know who Rayshard Brooks is, come out from under that fucking rock you're living in, please. Um, and we'll give you a little down low on what's going on with this guy. This guy is a man from Atlanta, Georgia, who was very intoxicated. Who had just, Now, this is just what I've been reading. I haven't fact-checked any of this, but this is what I've read. I've read this guy was released early from jail due to COVID. Um, and he'd already had one DUI since he'd been out. Now, he's passed out in a Wendy's drive through Can't blame the man for wanting Wendy's late at night, drunk. We've all been there. Um, the store manager or whoever seen him out there calls the police. I've read the report, police reports that just came out either today or yesterday. I read the reports of the dialogue of what was said. Basically, what was said, she calls the cops, says, hey, there's a guy passed out in my drive the drive through I tried to wake him up. He's breathing. He woke up, looked at me, went back to sleep. So then this is when the video picks up. The video picks up, and the cops get there. They um they conduct a field sobriety test because they smell alcohol on him. That's probable cause. They probably could have arrested him on the spot without doing the field sobriety test. But that gave him the benefit of the doubt. The guy admits to drinking. Ray Shard does. Mr. Brooks does. He fails the uh, field sobriety test pretty miserably. I mean, he's obviously intoxicated, slurring his words, et cetera, et cetera. They ask him if he wants to take a breathalyzer. At first, he agrees. When they get the breathalyzer out there, then he's like, fuck that, I'm not taking the breathalyzer, which is fine. That's your right as an American citizen. But you're going to jail for DUI refusal anyway, regardless. So the cops get him in hand, get one of his arms in handcuffs, and then they go to put the other one in. He snatches away. They immediately take him to the ground. Here's where shit to go south. He starts struggling. They the cops do exactly what they're trained to do. They use non lethal force. He's not armed. He's not a threat to them. They tase him, and he continues to struggle. He actually reaches back for the taser, grabs the fucking taser, and then they're like, "Oh shit!" So he get, they get off of him. And they get up and he takes off running. He would have been fine. They would not have shot him. I believe it wholeheartedly. Yes, they pulled their guns, but that's to protect themselves. Until he turned back and fired the fucking taser at the cops, he was not shot. So that's that's what I've seen so far. Did Have you seen anything different, Josh? That's pretty much what I think happened. No, and I mean, I watched the video and it looked like Rayshard was absolutely, like when he pulled out of the, hey, when they were trying to put the handcuffs on him, he pulled out. He looked like he started putting the beaters on him, dude. 
Like, this guy wasn't no just, like, Joe Smo. Bud, I mean, it was taking those two officers all they could just to get him down on the ground. Uh, right. My whole yeah, problem exactly. with this situation is there. there's two things on both sides. Number one, it was a taser. So, in, in this, I do – I honestly think it was a good shoot. Oh, but, for, I, I do too. I don't I, see I, how. I'm not, not, not going to beat around the bush by this. I think it's a good shoot. But at the same time, in this climate, when you know, and like I said, these cops just want to go home to their families at night. So I don't blame them whatsoever. And, but at the same time, in this climate, if I'm a cop, I'm thinking, okay, this dude's got a taser. If he tases me, my partner's here. He might be able to do something. I don't know Expect if I'm a cop in this situation. Like I said, I wasn't there. And I'm not arguing that it's not. it was not a good shoot. What I'm arguing is that do you think that this is going to start changing people's minds? Like cops putting their own lives at risk because they're afraid to do something like this. Because obviously you see what kind of ridicule they've gotten, uh, they're getting through. I mean, I think they're trying to charge that one guy. I mean, the guy who did the shoot with murder, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Yeah, there's not a jury in the world, and there's no prosecutor in the world good enough to get a murder conviction on that. That's it's just it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. It was a good shoot. I'm not sure why he got fired. They said he was shot in the back. That's because he was turned and aiming the fucking taser at him with his back still to him. Yeah, he was shot in the fucking back. You can be shot in the back and still pull a trigger. It, let's say it was a handgun, right? Let's just let's go out. Of, let's take a step back. If it's a handgun. And he's pointing at the cops and running from him at the same time. Can he still be shot in the back? You fucking right, he can still get shot in the back. Can he still shoot the cops in the face for, while his back's turned to him? Yes, he can. I don't give a fuck if he was shot in the back, if he was shot in the forehead. This is where I'll draw the line. Now, you guys know my stance on the George Floyd shit. That was, that's murder. And honestly, murder too is what they're going to get a conviction with that. And he's going to do time behind bars, rightfully so. The people comparing this to the George Floyd murder just fucking diminish what he, the way he died and what all the people were marching for and protesting for it diminishes it. And I, I hate that this guy had put the officer's lives in danger. Let's say the taser goes off. Like you said, he was a strong man. He was a strong man. Let's say they're trying to use non-lethal force. You already seen the taser's not working because they tased the shit out of him. He reached back there and grabbed that bitch and fucking took off running. So the taser's not doing any good. Let's say he tases one of them. And that that's that's the end of that cop. He's fucking on the ground, fucking struggling. He goes over and fucking absolutely puts the beaters because he was very well capable of doing that on the other cop. Gets the gun, shoots both of them. Now we're looking at a whole other scenario. What would be the outlash then? Oh, the cops should have shot him. You, yeah, exactly. You, you, you don't know. Like you said, these guys are trying to go home to their families. And I seen a fellow, I'm not going to say fellow because I'm not a police officer, but I seen a Dublin police officer at the gym today when I was lifting. One of my good friends, super good guy, good guy, Christian. Um, I think he's having a baby coming up soon. And anyway, all the cops I know are good people. Now, does that mean all cops are good? No, there's some dickheads out there for sure. And people that abuse authority, like any profession. But I was like, you know, and I hadn't talked to him since he became a police officer. He just recently became one. And I said, you know, and that was his dream. He wanted to work for the state patrol, me and him at had it mapped out. We were going to go to the mandate and all that together. But anyway, long story short, he's a Dublin city cop. Hadn't been there long. And I asked him, I was like, you know, how are, good to see you. You know, how's, are you enjoy being a cop? He said, I loved it up until two weeks ago. And I was like, man, the only thing I can tell you words to you is make sure you make it home to your family. Do what you got to do to get home to your family. And that's what these guys are doing. They're not going to put their life in jeopardy. So a criminal, somebody who was drinking and driving for the second fucking time since he got released early from from jail. During, he got The only reason he's out of jail is because of COVID. When he got arrested for the first DUI, they should have locked his ass back up. He's obviously not contributing anything to society, but being a fucking nuisance. Lock his ass back up and don't let him come out till his fucking term's over. Let him sit in there and think about that DUI. Now this is the second time. And it gets shot. What do you think? It, what do you think is about to happen when you point a taser at a cop? What do you think is about to happen? Sorry, 
Well, and what scares me is the the path that I see us taking at this point with all the George Floyd stuff and the Armad Aubrey deal is because I mean, not that the Armad Aubrey deal was involved the police, but <clears throat> there's such an outrage culture. And yes, those two situations were outrageous and they should have Absolutely. been dealt with. But at Absolutely. what point, like we see with this Rayshard Brooks case, at what point do we draw the line and say, okay, this is wrong? Okay, this guy was obviously trying to harm these cops who were just trying to do their job, keep a drunk driver off the road. What would have happened if those cops would have drove by and said, oh, that's an African-American with all this that's going on. I don't think we should do anything. He wakes up out of the Wendy's drive through goes home and kills a mom and her three kids. And then you have a single father who has no family, has lost his wife and all his three kids, and has no life because this man wasn't stopped because the police were afraid to do their job in this climate. Right. And I don't, I don't think this was racially charged at all. I'm going to have to be honest with you. Um, the cops pulled over. They got called there, correct? They got called there. They got a call. And they, they arrive on scene. They do everything according to the book. They issue a uh, sobriety, field sobriety test. They offer him a, um, a breathalyzer. He denies the breathalyzer. They're like, okay, well, unfortunately, you're going to jail, sir. And he knows this is probably his last strike. He's like, fuck, I just went to jail for a DUI a couple weeks ago. I'm supposed to be in jail, but for COVID, they let me out. He knew what he was doing. He knew the danger he was putting himself in. If he wanted to go home to his family and make it home to his family, he wouldn't have resisted arrest and fucking pointed a taser, which can kill you. I don't know if you know this. People die from getting tased and pointed it at a cop and expected to go home. I'm not real sure what, what's going on. Of course... Alcohol does hinder the mind, but that's not the job of the cops to say, hey, he's drunk. He don't know what he's doing. Let him shoot me with a fucking taser. No. When you're drunk, even when you're under the influence of alcohol, you're, there are consequences for every every decision you make. And that decision, unfortunately, cost him his life. I'm not saying he was a bad human at all. Don't get me wrong. Everybody deserves a second chance. No, I'm pretty sure that I've seen that he went to jail for beating the shit out of his kids. So, yeah, he was a piece of shit. I mean, okay. And, and that, I'd say, I didn't say, he didn't say that. Shit. So, that's, I mean, right, I, like so. that. I don't, I haven't fact checked it, but uh, I, off the, all, most all the information I've seen that's gone along with saying he got out of jail because he was, uh, was because of the COVID 19 and that he essentially got, had the encounter with the police because he was drunk also said that he was in jail because he beat the shit out of his kids. So yes, that man was a piece of shit. And honestly, right. somebody should have put a bullet in his ass before that happened. Anyway, you beat a kid. It's ridiculous. So, I mean, you got, you got to think you on top of all of this and everybody was like, we got to get the criminal. We got to get the criminals out and we got to let them, they, we don't need to let them suffer with the COVID-19 and it's, Dude, you let a dude out who beat the hell out of his kids. Right. And it's the same thing with the George Floyd case. I don't care about any of the drugs. I don't care about any of the, whatever he did in the past is fine. Like, I, I mean, but where I draw the line is when it comes out and says the dude was uh, held a pregnant woman at gunpoint because he was robbing a trap house. Now, was she in the wrong place with a child in her stomach? Yeah. But when you point a gun at a pregnant woman and you tell her, you better tell me where the stash is or I'm going to take your baby out your belly with this gun. The dude was a piece of shit. Now, whether he'd resolved, whatever he had resolved his life or turned his right life around to God like they say he is, that's up the, the Lord and him to deal out with. But I'm sick right. of this narrative where... These people get involved with the cops. Both of these guys in which resisted arrest. Now, in the George Floyd case, yes, murder should not have been handled like that. But coming out and saying, oh, these guys were great people. Nah, one beat the hell out of his kids and one pointed a loaded gun in a pregnant woman's stomach. I mean, you got to start thinking about crap like this. When, exactly. When you, when which brings me, which brings me to a point real quick, Josh. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. You know how these this outrage culture, they're quick, they're real quick to say, uh, it doesn't matter what he's done in his past, et cetera, et cetera. These are the same motherfuckers that are saying this cop had been reprimanded previously for using force. Uh, keep that same fucking energy. 
don't if don't if you don't want to talk about the past, don't talk about the past. If you want to talk about the past, we can go there too. Yes, he was reprimanded for uh, excessive use of force, but you got to look into the narrative of that as well. He's had every cop has complaints against him. If you get a re- if you are making an arrest or piss somebody off, what are they going to do? They're going to go try to fucking file a report on you, obviously. But if you're going to let bygones be bygones, run that on both sides of the table. If you if you don't want to talk about Rayshard Brooks getting out of out of jail for COVID nineteen and being a habitual offender of the law, then let's not talk about the cop and his his prior runs run ins with being reprimanded for use of force either. You well, got you got to do it both ways. I mean, who, it's not it's not right. Who even knows what situations they'll come out and they'll say, "Oh, well, he was reprimanded six times for using excessive force." Okay, well, also I need the other information. I need the information of who he was arresting, why he was arresting them, what kind of force did he don't just come out here and say, yeah, he was reprimanded. Because obviously if he wasn't fired, then it wasn't that big of an issue. It was a complaint. Right. It was a complaint. And reprimand could be something as simple as sitting down and having a conversation and getting his side of the story. So that means nothing to me without context. That's just, they want to squeeze something to fit their narrative. But if it doesn't fit their narrative, even though, it's exactly what they're talking about on the other side of the coin. They don't give a shit. So me and Josh are only here to state what we know factually and give our opinions based on those facts. So based on the facts I see here, George Floyd should be alive today. And I'm sorry that his life was taken from him. And I'm glad that justice is going to be served. I'm very confident that he's going to be convicted. Rayshard Brooks, on the other hand, um, I, it's unfortunate that somebody lost their life. Of, of course, I went and I don't wish death on my worst enemy. It's something that can't be undone, but unfortunately in the split second, the officer responding officers have to react. They felt their life was in jeopardy. And I'm, I hate that he was fired for doing what he was trained to do. That's what you're trained to do. He, he did it the right way, everything by the book and he still lost his job. And now his career is probably ruined. He's not going to get hired anywhere. I'm almost positive. So that's well, unfortunate. But in my in my opinion, he's got a case here to sue sue the whoever he works for. I think he works for Atlanta Metropolitan Police Department. So he's got a lawsuit on his hands. He might be sitting back smoking a cigar here in a couple of years. Well, and I think the Atlanta mayor had come out, and I mean, she was uh, extremely supportive behind the cops at first. And like I said, that was just due to the protests and things. It had nothing to do with this situation. So uh, maybe it's a situation where they'll look and say, Hey, uh, we just need to be on, this needs to go under review. We'll talk about it. We'll take it before city council and deal with it that way. And let me just make a side note here because I kind of got a little bit pissed off. I do not agree with George Floyd's death. I think, I mean, he was legit murdered. Yeah, but I think I, I think across the get, board. I do. I want to get the point across. I do want to get the point across that when we take situations like this, and everybody's like, "Well, he was doing this, and he that." The, don't paint somebody out to be a a saint and a martyr for a situation when it benefits you. Yeah, what happened to him was terrible, and I wish that he had not died. I, w- I mean, I wish he was still alive. I wish he was walking around. And I mean, if he had turned his life to Christ, good for him. I mean, that's fantastic. And if he was really, truly, uh, if he was really, truly a born again, saved Christian, then he's in a much better place than we are right now. I guarantee that. But I just think of the narrative where every time something happens, this guy goes up as a martyr and you look at his past and everybody's going to be, well, Hutto, you can't judge people. You can't judge people. Uh, when it has something to do with a woman and a child, an unborn child, yeah, I will. I'll call him a piece of shit. I don't care. But, I mean, I just wanted to get that out there. That I mean, I'm not in no way, shape, or form justifying his murder by that. He shouldn't have been killed. Yeah, no doubt. I think across the board, it's pretty unanimous. You look at it, the left, the right. I mean, it's pretty much unanimous. Normally, when you see these things, it's about 50-50, whether even with the Rayshard Brooks thing, you see about 50-50, 50 people say, 50% of the people saying, you know, he shouldn't, have, he shouldn't have been killed, and then 50% saying, oh, he definitely he got what was coming to him. But on the George Floyd case, I've seen, you know, you'll have those couple of trolls in the fucking comments saying, oh, he got what he deserved, he was a piece of shit criminal, blah, blah, blah. But I really did not see that in this case. I think pretty much the United States as a whole 
was d- demanding justice. I mean, and I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, cut and dry, that he was. I mean, that's wrong. What happened to him? No doubt about it. Oh, I mean, we all were. And like I said, just because he did something like he did to that woman doesn't mean that I would want to see him killed. I'd, I'd like to see him uh, been judged by 12 of his peers in a court of law for it. Yeah, I would. Right. Well, Everybody I mean, deserves that deserve, day in court. Yeah, he didn't deserve death for it by no means. Yeah, for sure. There's no doubt about that. Um, and I'm not I'm not even saying Rayshard Brooks deserved death. Um, for his actions, I, I really, it's a human life, honestly. I look at all human life the same. Unfortunately, he's not with us today, but that's based on a decision he made. And like like I said, every decision you make in life, no matter how small you think it is, it has a consequence. So I, I pray that all you take that very seriously. For instance, I rode by, we had protests here locally in Dublin. And I rode by and I saw several friends that I went to school with. And man, I could just see it in their eyes. They really believe in something. And that makes me very proud of them that they can stand up for what they believe in. But there's a way to go about it. They're not out there stealing the cops' tasers and trying to shoot the cops with tasers. And I'm proud of them for handling it the right way and standing up for what they believe in. I encourage everybody to stand up for what they believe in. And if you don't like the way shit's being handled, Guess what? There's an election coming up in November. You can change that. You can be your voice. You can you can lead help help lead people in your community. And I encourage everybody to do that. Use your right to vote. That's your that's your voice. So um anyway, we're gonna move on. That got a little heated there, which makes for great fucking entertainment, not gonna lie. Um, let's talk about another touchy subject. Seattle, Washington. Hold on, I'm gonna let you take this one. Explain what the fuck actually is going on in Seattle right now for those of you those people that don't know. Okay, so basically what has happened is these people who have started this thing called CHAD, and I can't ever remember the freaking acronym for it. It's like, uh, I'm not even, because I'm going to murder it if I try to say it. But what it basically is, is six square blocks that citizens have basically taken over, and they say it's a... um, It's a police-free zone. Basically, it's a government-free zone. Everyone in there is just against police officers and things like that. And they're trying. I guess they're trying to figure out making their own little uh, country and whatnot right there in those six blocks. Which honestly, I'm all for. I hope these. I hope every liberal in America moves to this one six-block radius. And I hope they vote in their little country and they have their elections and they have their presidents and they don't let us come in and they don't come out and then we'll all live peacefully. So I'm a hundred percent behind this, them getting like, dude, I'll even give them a whole state and they can have it as their own little country and stuff like that. But, um, they, uh, what it basically is, is they have a border which, I mean, if you're a liberal, you're not supposed to agree with. They have uh, one entry, which if you're a liberal, you're supposed to believe that uh, open borders is the best policy. They have armed guards at the gate. And if you're a liberal, you're supposed to believe that guns are bad and that you shouldn't have to have guns to protect something that you, which they might love the Chad, whatever they call it now. Hey, and, yes, um, by the way, guys. Um, it's chat as Chaz is what I'm reading. Is it a Chaz? Um, I knew I would screw it up. Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. But I looked up Chad just just for shits and giggles right here. I don't mean to get you off topic here. I looked up Chad acronym. Guess what I found on Urban Dictionary, my friend? What? Something about a holy bad shit. Boy. The sticky buildup found between the scrotum and the arse. Build up increases when the person doesn't shower or has a hot, sweaty day. Bro, get that Holy guy. fuck. <laughs> get that out of here. Get rid of that Chad, buddy. <laughs> Take you a shower. Get rid of that Chad. So I was, right, woefully, I was woefully uninformed on what was going <laughs> on. No, I do not support Chad. But, sure you do. Um, anyway, what they do, I mean, basically, and, and when you want to enter, they have a small corridor that you can enter through and if you want to enter into the chaz then uh you have to answer these questions and go through some sort of uh screening process and that's how you get into their little 
section of the world, their little six bot country that they've taken over. And the funny thing, because I mean, dude, whatever they're doing over there, if that's what they want to do and they're not hurting nobody, dude, let them do it. But the funny thing to me is that everything that they have there, the whole way that that is set up, the whole way that you get into this country, the way that they're not letting people out. I mean, they're, I mean, they're not letting information get out and they're not, they're they're just held up there, their own little area is because it's ba- their whole existence is basically Donald Trump's immigration plan that they hate. That you have yeah. to, that you can be let in, but you have to go through a screening process, and we'd like to know who you are and what you believe before you come in. <laughs> they have how ironic, right? They, they have borders, and then there's guns. Dude, and holy it's fuck! Against, it's basically against everything they believe in. Yeah, that, that's 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 great I mean, shit right there. I, Not gonna I, lie to I fully you. Support, I fully support it, dude. Let's give them. Oh yeah. Whatever they want, dude. I'll let them as long as their country, the state that they pick, is not in the South. I mean, somewhere, it, dude. If they want all of California and they want to secede and all the liberals go out there and live their happy lives and we get to go on with ours and we're kind of like separated from, them, I'm down for it, dude. Give them the whole entire state. We'll even give them some startup money because we know California <laughs> doesn't have any. Right. Um, yeah, I find it ironic uh, uh, how they're going about all this. And I find it, I don't think, they probably don't even know how to use guns. I'm not trying to stereotype here. But as a liberal, like you said, some of their basic beliefs are that guns are bad, abortion's good. Let me tell you something. In the six block radius, I hope they got a fucking dozen uh, Walmarts and Kmarts and fucking Kroger because they're going to get hungry. Oh, they're already running out of food. They're, Where the fuck are they no, fit to get food listen, from? Dude, listen, they're getting, they're making signs. I've seen signs that they're sticking outside of the chaz in the ground, demanding for the public officials of Seattle to give, bring them back this supply. So they obviously did not think too tactically about this situation. They should have built the chaz around, like you said, around like a Walmart and had the Walmart parking lot where they could like set up and have tents and hippie communion and stuff out there and you know you go if you i mean the walmart has like i think their milk has maybe like a two or three week expiration date so they could at least live off of milk and crackers out there for about two or three weeks and whatever you can get pots and pans and camping materials inside of the walmart so the tactical thing to do would have been take over the walmart but what they have done (laughs) is take over a whole entire six blocks of nothing and what they have, mm. what the supplies that were there was destroyed by rioters and looters. <laughs> so they have nothing. That's a, bro, I'm not going to tell you. I, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how funny I think this is. And I'm with you. It, by all means, if they're not hurting anybody, if they're not fucking, you dude, know, dude, threatening dude, to kill people, dude, by all means, do, do what you want. I'm all for, if this is your form of protest, I'm all for it. Um, You're not looting. For the mo- I don't think they're doing looting or anything. If they have, they've already looted everything in that six block uh, perimeter already. Anyway, if but, they're not burning down shit, destroying the city, by all means, you huddle up in there. If you think you're getting something accomplished, didn't they take over like the police station or something? Yeah, or city hall or something. I think it's shit? actually built around the police station and city hall. I think that the interesting. I think that actually, I think city hall was abandoned and they took it over, and then they demanded. I mean, not city hall. The police station was abandoned and they took it over. And I'm fairly sure that they demanded the city hall be added to the Chad or Chaz. And they said, okay, here it is. And everyone in the government just moved out and was like, okay, we'll see y'all later. Y'all do y'all stuff. <laughs> Going on a mini vacation here. Yeah. Um, Man, before, that- we, before we start the next, uh, next segment kind of deal, do you, what kind of thoughts do you have on, you know, there's been recent calls of everybody like calling to defund the police departments. Okay, let I just I have a question for everybody that's that's got that. So if you defund the police department, there are no police theoretically, correct? Is that what they're talking about? Um, I'm assuming so. Okay, so if you're defunding the police, the cops aren't gonna work for free. So I'm assuming you don't want police officers. Let's say somebody breaks, kicks your fucking door in, steals all your shit. Who are you calling? Grandma and grandpa are they gonna roll their fucking wheelchairs down there and bring you their guns so you can shoot back? Get the fuck out of here. Police are here for a reason. Are there bad ones? Absolutely. Are there good ones? Absolutely. For the most part, do I believe a lot of them actually are there to serve and protect the community? I do. 
And without without police or somebody to enforce law, it's going to be anarchy. It's going to be the sur- survival of the fittest and who has the most guns and shit. So by all means, I'm, I mean, if they want to do that, sure, and, let's have at it. I'm going to come steal your shit because I can't go to jail for it. Here's one of my next questions or kind of statements. I saw a video of the protesters bashing in somebody's window. And this dude comes out like a madman out of his car with like, this out of some kind of oh my god, a fucking, I've seen that with, shit, bro. With the, like the the hand <laughs> spear, it's the sword off Lord of the Rings. The hand spear is all I could think of to describe. It looked like the, the fucking sword off Halo. And so these people protesting the police. One of the girls starts screaming. Somebody call the call police. The police. <laughs> I mean, you know that same that same exact girl is out here saying, defund the police. Fuck 12, yeah. I mean, whenever it comes, you're like, oh, call the police. Yeah. Uh, what they don't understand, is, or what, I, what they don't understand is that if you do defund the police, there's going to be one of two things, or one of three things that actually happen. Police go away. Number two, you're going to have police departments. They're not going to have that much money. And when they do not have that much money, your, I mean, your training suffers. And isn't that what we're all calling for is more training, more, um, uh, better tactical training, better, uh, training. Yeah, I, how and to I, take down force. And or, I can agree with them on that aspect. I think police officers deserve for, for the line of duty they're in and the line of work they're in. They need a lot more training than we give them. Um, they're, for, they're asked to do a job that's very hard, very challenging with very little experience. And a lot of these officers, on your first day, I mean, you're thrown to the fucking wolves. And yeah. I mean, it's it's really sad. And I can I can attest to that. Yes. We need social social justice in general reform with our justice system, police departments. I can agree with that a hundred percent. But if you defund them, like you said, that's not what we're gonna get. We're gonna get and your anarchy. Third, your third option is that your police departments are going to go privatized. Now, if you start, I'm all for privatized police departments because we might get, I mean, you're looking at thousands of jobs for veterans where you come out, they're not run by government officials. You could get old veterans who have been and know how to use or have have been in combat situations, don't get freaked out by things and they come into these situations and it's basically, I mean, right now we're kind of looking at downtown Seattle and L- uh, places like Atlanta are really a combat zone. So yeah. it, eventually, if, okay, if you defund the police and they go away, some rich dude is going to step up and say, okay, I need 10,000 veterans, whoever wants a job. You have experience, you have uh, tactical experience. You have experience with guns. You, I mean, a lot of these people, there's a bunch of people who were in the military that were in peace that you were already military police. What the heck, bring them back to be police. And then you start, the problem is you start having police departments who are not, um, they're not regulated by government because they're privately owned. They are not funded by the government. So you really can't tell them what to do. So, which pick your poison one of the three yeah I, it's really i'm comfortable with the thing way things are personally i have had some trouble with the police and you handle that accordingly and based on the situation um there's no reason to defund the police in my opinion over if you look at if you look at it at, on the big scale yes there are more people that die to police than there should be. I agree with that. And some people are, I mean, use of force, deadly force shouldn't be used as often as it is. But uh, if you look at it on the big scale, how often is that? What like, I, I, I'm not, I haven't looked up the numbers, but I, I would guess that's far lower than we're led to believe by the media, way far lower than we're led to believe by the media, in my opinion. So do we defund the police based on these, Small occurrences, or do we try to fix those small occurrences by possibly giving them more training? I'm I'm for the more training, and I think all around judges need to be held in check. There's th- some of these judges in these small towns fucking rule with an iron fist, dude. They really do. If you look at towns like Jacksonville, Georgia, um, even Fitzgerald, it's a good instance. Them fuckers are corrupt as shit down there. They can get away with a lot of shit. We need to have somebody that holds these guys in check. 
we need to have these police officers need more training, especially at the at the local levels. I mean, I think the FBI and the CIA they're they're pretty elite in their training and on job training stuff like that. But when it comes to locally, I feel like we can get a lot better. That's just my opinion. And they're just I just do not understand how. If you look at government and how when we see a problem in government or in the way we live society or something needs to be fixed. In the past, everybody says, I mean, every situation they say, well, if we throw a bunch of money, let's get a bill. And it's like COVID-19. Let's make a bill where we throw $3 trillion at it and hope that fixes it because money can fix everything. But yet we have this problem that cops are under train. Or there's cops who are not trained in uh, non-lethal takedowns as well as they should or situations like that. But yet you say, hey, let's just defund them. It, it, doesn't, make, it doesn't correlate with the cycle that we've been taking. So either one or the other is wrong. Either one, throwing money at something doesn't, have, doesn't solve problems, which I agree 100% it doesn't solve problems. In this case, with the police officers, yes, train, money, tra- extra training, better training costs more money. So you have kind of an either or. Does money solve these problems or does money not? Because we've had multiple problems with the government in the past that they're like, oh, we'll throw $1 trillion at it or $350 billion at it and it, it'll solve its, I mean, this money will solve its problem. We're told every time we're going to put this money towards this problem and we're going to go to work with it. And you never yeah. see any change, right? Um, I agree, and I think I don't think any amount on the in the of money would ever eliminate the problem completely. It, but it would help. It would go a long way in helping. I think that's just my opinion. Let's move on. MGK. I don't know what's up with this motherfucker. He's ugly as shit. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. What do you think about MGK? You think he's a handsome young man or what? Or is he fugly? Dude, I really. I mean. The only reason I know who MGK is is because of his rap battles with Eminem and their little beef deal. But um, I've seen a picture of him, and he kind of looks like a water weasel. If I were to <laughs> identify him say, as I, an animal. I'm a, I'm a fan of MGK's music, actually. I think he's got some good tracks out there, and I think he, he, he's he got good bars, man. And he's from uh, Cleveland, so he's from the he's, he's down with the culture. So I, I'm a fan of MGK's music. But the fucker's ugly. He's a big skinny bean pole. If I ever see him, I'm going to slap the fucking taste out of his mouth just because I feel like I can assert my dominance with him. That's just my opinion. Have you seen the fucking list of bad bitches he's pulled this year? This motherfucker is, while we're all going downhill in 2020, this motherfucker is thriving like no other. He started out the year Chantel or Chantel, I don't know how you pronounce her name, Jeffries. Do you know who she is? No, I do not. Look her up right fucking now. How do we and I mean, right now. Um, how do you see? I wonder if there's a place where I could just Chantel. Just go to Chantel Jeffries on Google and go to images right now. I'm She's right. a bad bitch, bro. I mean, wait. And that, this is probably the least hot out of all the bitches he's been with this year. But she's definitely out of MGK's league, I feel like. What the fuck's going on here? Uh, here my, I am single, and MGK is pulling bad bitches. My first question is, like, how do we know, how are we keeping track with MGK's, oh, shoot. How are we keeping track of MGK's sexual escapades like this? Okay, so. Coming out and telling people. Okay, so, there's these people called paparazzi. I know you know who they are. Yeah. That's their fucking job. They hunt these motherfuckers down, find them eating out dinner in public. And you know he's smashing. There's no doubt about it. They were seen multiple occasions. If there's more than one occasion, he's probably smashed. I'm going to be honest with you. So he started out the year with Chantel Jeffries, courting her, going on dates with her. Then I want you to, you don't even have to look this one up. I know you know who she is. His next uh, dating escapade was Summer Rae, Instagram model, fitness guru with a banging, banging booty. What, what the fuck is going on here? NGK, I must be missing something. Dude's got to have a dick the size of a fucking flashlight or something. I don't know. Then, do you know who he's with now, who we've seen with this week? No, I do not. Do you know Megan Fox? Yes, I do know Megan Fox. Oh, my God, dude. What the fuck is in the water down there, yo? (laughs) Money. I need some of that juice, MGK. (laughs) They've got money. money. They've all got money. They don't need this ugly fuck. Dude. Um, 
It's something about the bars, dude. I got to become a rapper. Fuck that. Y'all want yeah, me to spit a few yeah, freestyle might, lines for you? Fuck it. I'll do it. It might just be for the cloud. I mean, you never know which. I mean, because he's, from what I understand, a fairly successful rapper. Oh, yeah, he is. And he's a good rapper. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. His talent is undeniable. Now, is he my favorite rapper? Of course not. My favorite rapper right now is Roddy Rich. Shout out to my boy. Gotta put the stick in the box. Yeah, anyway. Roddy Rich is my favorite rapper right now. MGK was up there for a long time. Lace up. I mean, I got, you know, I know MGK. I've been rocking with him for a while. But I'm just going to be honest. I, I, I have promised myself that I'm going to be honest on this show. And as long as I'm living, I will be honest with you. I do not think he's a good looking guy at all. Oh, dude, he looks like a water weasel. That's all there is. And this motherfucker, Chantel Jeffries, Summer Rae, and Megan Fox bagged all them bitches, yo. So why did he break up with Summer Rae? Because that was a mistake. I don't know who broke up with who in any of these situations, to be honest. I don't know if it was mutual or what. I don't know if the dick game was weak or what. But buddy, who cares? He still bagged them, yo. <laughs> like, you can, you can take shots at him all day. You can be like, yeah, your, your dick game weak. That's why all your girls are leaving you. And his response will be, I still bagged them, bitches. Yeah, you did. Hats <laughs> off, my friend. Yeah, I would, any man in America would trade places with you right now, with the exception of a few that have banging wives. But other than that, 90% of America that are male, will, and probably some females, would trade spots with you. Good God. Anyway, that's my little spill on that. I seen I was reading it on uh, Twitter earlier. He was trending. and I was, Or no, Megan Fox was trending. And I came across an article of who all he's been dating this year. Holy fuck. Hats off, MGK. I don't know how you did it, buddy, but you need to give me some pointers. These bitches are bad. So what you going to do when he <laughs> drops Megan Fox and starts to date Addison Ray? <laughs> you, you don't ever say anything like that again, buddy. <laughs> don't you fucking play don't, with me like that. Don't disrespect her. Dude, Addison Ray. That's the only way he could upgrade, honestly, at this point. I mean, Megan Fox is a banger myself. Uh, myself. Ba Let me rephrase that. A banger herself. And Summer Rae and Chantel Jeffries are beautiful. But Addison Rae would definitely be an upgrade. So maybe that's who he shoots for next. Um, he's got some competition, I'll tell you that. I'm not going to go into details on my TikTok escapade uh, obsession, I would call it. But anyway, the last thing we're going to talk about, this episode is probably going to be a little shorter, which I'm happy about because it's 9.45 on my end. And I've got to be up at 5, so i still got to edit it. But we're doing it all for you guys, the fans. Um COVID-19, according to multiple news outlets uh, in the state of Georgia, was up 733 cases today. Josh, we talked about this at work, so go ahead and tell them your side of it, and then I'll give my opinion on it. It was, it was kind of funny because I was just like, I, I kind of try to scroll through social media and stuff while we're, just in case we see something we're going to talk about. Um, I saw a meme that said fear of riots and decline, switch back to Corona. I repeat, switch back to Corona. I dude, I just don't, I, I don't see it. I, I feel like, okay, the riots have kind of, I mean, somewhat died down. Um, it, it, I just feel like they want us to constantly live in fear. And yes, there may be 700 some odd new Corona cases, but let's get this straight. It's a 99% survival rate. Get out of here, dude. I mean, I, I think I'm going to take my chances. And even if, I mean, that, that's just my spill on it, even if, I mean, if these facts are correct. I don't think they are. I think they're just making all of it up at this point. And that's just me. You can say, well, Josh, you don't believe me. I mean, there's these statistics. I just, I don't believe it. I think they're making it up. I think they're trying to make us... They're trying, number one, trying to divide us. The, the media is definitely trying to divide us right now. And then on top of that, they also want us to live in fear because there's some deadly uh, deadly virus about. Well, no, no crap there's a deadly virus about. You've let freaking thousands and thousands of people run them up through the street breaking windows for the past week. So if this virus spreads as bad as it does, the, to, to me, it should be worse than 700 people. If it's spread, if it's as deadly and contagious as they say it is, it should be worse because there's been hundreds of thousands of people in the street meshing together for the past two weeks, and we've got 719, and we're I mean that's that really this big of a deal, right? I'd have to agree. Um, so we agree on a lot of stuff, we really do. And here again, we're going to agree. 
maybe there are 733 new cases. Um, that's fine. We have 58,000 confirmed cases uh, according to the research I've done here recently. That's a small percentage, man. It's like, it's literally like, I think some, something like 2% of the whole population of the United States got it. And then you go to 1% of them die. So it's a very small, I like my chances of li- surviving this pandemic. And they were, they've been wrong about so much. I feel like they thought it was going to be more deadly. Of course, they thought it was going to be more widespread. They thought it was going to kill a lot more people than it has. I'm not saying certain areas aren't affected worse than others. New York, of course, people are on top of each other. It spread re- rapidly and they weren't able to combat it. So a lot more people die in New York. There's probably a higher death rate there. But the, if you look at the average the average age of people that are dying, it's, it's older than the life expectancy anyway in, in America. So I'm not really that afraid for me. I'm still, of course, worried about my grandparents, They're especially my Papa Jimmy. Those, those of you who believe in prayer, he's been um, battling a bunch of sicknesses lately. And I've seen him today. And he's lost a lot of color. I know he's down in the dumps, but um, hopefully he'll keep fighting and keep fighting the good fight. He's a great, great person, and um, I just hope he hope he has the strength to keep fighting. And I, I think COVID would probably um, it, it'd take a big toll on him for sure. He's been in the hospital a couple times in the last couple months um, with some infections and stuff like that, but he was able. He never got it, so that's a good sign. And he doesn't really get out a whole lot, so. I think he's staying to himself. And so I encourage you, if you're a high a high risk to possibly have greater um, greater symptoms than some of the other people, you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, of course, any kind of lung infection, if your immune system's weak or if you're older, stay inside. Don't risk it. I mean, there's no sense in risking it. But life has to go on at some point. We can't stay inside the rest of our lives. And I tell you what, college football's coming up. And if a second wave of this shit fucks up my college football that I've been planning on, I'm going to be pissed off. And we have a whole show coming up, just so you know. Me, Hunto, and I haven't talked to Zach Rios yet, but I know he's going to be down. No, we're going to we're going to do today. We're going to be doing like an ESPN show, not on Saturday morning, of course. We might release, I don't know, I'll play with the release dates the first couple of weeks. I'll see which one does better. We'll probably record on like a Wednesday. It'll take me a little while to edit it, of course. And then we're going to put it out there, so... We're going to give you some uh, gambling advice because I've become quite the gambling connoisseur lately. I gamble on just about everything, NASCAR, UFC, and there's a certain formula to it. And I'll, I'll share with you guys who I'm picking for the week, make you a nice little parlay, some of the sure lock-ins who I think will definitely win the game. Anyway, now I'm getting all off t- topic. But back to COVID, I'm not scared of it. I, I, if it's my time, I'm a firm believer. My time's already set in stone when I'm going to pass away, so – whether it be from this virus or a car wreck on the way to work in the morning. I'm at peace with it. I've made my amends. I'm living a better life now. I can honestly say I don't fear death near as much as I did six months ago. So um, I'm ready for it. Bring on COVID. I'm not, we're not scared of you. Anything else you got to say, Josh? No, I think we're, we have covered just about everything for right. 50, 50 minutes for four, four or five subjects. So, yeah, so we, some of the subjects obviously are going to take longer to cover than the others. The MGK was pretty quick. Um, Rayshard Brooks was obviously a lot longer. That's how it's going to be sometimes. Um, but as always, we're going to come out with another episode sometime this week, maybe this weekend. I'm not sure. Um, as the our new equipment starts arriving, I'm going to start assembling stuff, so I have even less time than I already do to record. But bear with us. It's going to pay off. It's going to be some good shit. So uh, make sure y'all subscribe on all platforms. Tell a friend about us. I'll be prepared. Be thinking about who you're going to go vote for in November. Um, and, yeah, if you if you got anything you want to hear from us, um, leave it in the comments or DM me or Josh. And we've already got three guests that are coming on our, when we do start doing the live stuff. So uh, not it's not live, sorry, the video version. Got um, so if you're interested – Gonna be We've got them lined up. Too. I'll do this. Some There's going to be some good shit speed on here. Um, So make sure y'all are subscribing to my YouTube channel because that's where the video versions are going to be coming in. And make sure y'all subscribe and put on the little post notification so you get notified when I post. Um, And if you want to come on, let us know and we'll get you lined up. We'll line up a date that works for both of us and get some topics going. Anyway, 
Y'all have a good week. Y'all keep pushing forward. Make that money. Peace. Holla. 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 Thanks for tuning into the B Max Sports Podcast. 40, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Listen, my whole family loves it, man. I never miss an episode. It's the best. We'll see you next week. Go rock this thing, huh? Love you, man. Let's go get it.